Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Pooja's Little World. This is Zuri Mani here. Today I am going to read and explain a chapter My Childhood. This is from the great scientist, our 11th president, APJ Abdul Kalam. Uh, Abdul Kalam was not only a scientist, he was also a statesman actually and what is a statesman a uh, skilled experienced and respected politician in the field of science abdul kalam's project in space defense and nuclear technology guided india into the 21st century and he became the president 11 president of india in 2002 Today's chapter, my childhood is an extract taken from his autobiography, The Wings of Fire. Autobiography means, autobiography is a life story actually written by a person himself. So, and this chapter actually APJ Abdul Kalam con explains his childhood memories, shares his childhood memories, incidents which affected him in a very positive way. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam's positive, secure childhood, upbringing, inspiring parents, supportive friends, and honest teachers, they all instilled good values in him. So, that is how we see him in this chapter. Let's start the chapter with reading and explanation. I was born into a middle class Tamil family in the island town of Rameswaram in the Eswail Madras state. My father, Zainulabdin, had neither much formal education nor much wealth. Despite these disadvantages, he possessed great innate wisdom and a true generosity of spirit. He had an idol helpmate in my mother, Asiyama. I do not recall the exact number of people she feed every day, but I am quite certain that far more outsiders ate with us than all the members of our own family put together. So, uh, my childhood, APJ come. Abdul Kalam was born in middle class Tamil family in 1931 and uh, in the island town of Rameshwaram in Madras. Now it is in Tamil Nadu. His father Zainul Abdin and mother Asiyama provided secure childhood to Abdul and his three brothers and one sister. His father did not have much education and wealth, but had great wisdom and he was a very generous person. His wife Asiyama was a ideal partner for him. She was very generous too and she is very kind actually. And every day she used to feed a lot of people in their house. So. This paragraph tells a lot about Dr. Kalam's parents. They were generous, kind and very intelligent. I was one of my many children, a short boy with rather undistinguished looks, born to tall and handsome parents. We live in our ancestral house which was built in the middle of the 19th century. It was a fairly large pakka house made of limestone and brick on a mosque street in Rameshwaram. My austere father used to avoid all essential, inessential comforts and luxuries. However, all necessities were provided for in terms of food, medicine or clothes. In fact, 
I would say mine was a very secure siloed both matter materially and emotionally. So uh, he was in contrast with his parents actually. They were tall and handsome, a uh, good looking. They live in their ancestor's house and as Kalam's father was very strict, so they avoided unnecessary expenses. He never gives children extra comfort and actually luxuries. But he always provided uh, for the necessities in terms of food, medicine and clothes. In short, they had a good childhood and it's a secure childhood but both mentally and physically. So, we can say that Kalam was happy then. In Second World War broke in, out in 1939 when I was 8 years old. For reasons I have never been able to understand, a sudden demand for tamarind seeds erupted in the market. I used to collect the seeds and sell them to a provision shop on Mosque Street. Edith's collection would fetch me the Princess Samu Wanana. My brother-in-law Jalaluddin would tell me stories about the war which I would later attempt to trace in the headlines in the nominee. Our area being isolated from was completely unaffected by the war. But soon India was forced to join the allied forces of and something like a state of emergency was declared. The first casualty came in the form of the suspension of the train halt at Rameswaram station. The newspaper now had to be bundled and thrown out from the moving train on the Rameshram road between Rameshram and Dhanuskadi. That forced my cousin Samsudin, to distri who distributed newspaper in Rameshram, to look for a helping hand to catch the bundle and as it naturally I feel the slot. Samsudin helped me earn my first wages. Half a century later, I can still feel the surge of pride in earning my own money for the first time. So, uh, in 1939, when the Second World War was broke out, uh, he was only 8 years old. And uh, Kamal earned his first wages actually by selling tamarind uh, in a grocery shop near Mosque Road. And soon after the World War began, India was also forced to allied or join in the allied force. In, in that time, the state emergencies, because of the state emergency, the normal procedure should be halted and suspended to control the situation. So, state emergency means a situation of national danger, disaster in which GOP suspended uh, to regain actually normal pro constitution procedure to regain control. So, because of the halt of train in the newspaper bundles thrown out from the moving train and Dr. Kamal's cousin Jamaluddin, by that time he used to distribute the newspapers there. So, he now he wanted someone to catch to someone to help him to catch the bundle from the moving train. So, it is obvious that he took Dr. Kalam who was free by that time and took him for this work. And that was when Dr. Kalam has his first actually earning. And uh, the newspaper who had, uh, so after I feel the slots and some student helped me earn my first wages during the halt. So, by the time some student took him as a working as a helping hand to his cousin and distributed a newspaper in Rameshwaram. 
and this was his first earning actually and about 50 years later half a century later i can still feel a surge of pride in earning my own money for the first time so about 50 years later dr kalam can still feel the pride in earning his own money for the first time in at that young age he always feel proud felt proud even that even at such a small age in which childhood he has the courage to earn money and he had that simplicity in him throughout every child is born with some inherited characteristics in a specific socio economic and emotional environment and trained in certain ways by figure of figures of authority i inherited honesty and self discipline from my father and from my mother i inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness and so did my three brothers and sisters so what he says that abdul inherited honesty and self discipline from his father and faith in goodness and deep kindness from his mother it is not that he only learned all these things his three brothers and a sister also learned all these things from inherited from their parents i had three close friends in my childhood ramanand sastri aravindan and sirva prakashan all these boys were from orthodox hindu brahmin families as children none of us ever felt any difference amongst ourselves because of our religious differences and upbringing in fact ramanand sastri was the son of a son of pakshi lakshmana sastri the high priest of the rameshwaram temple later he took over the priesthood of the rameshwaram temple from his father so uh, kalam in his childhood he had three close friends ramananda sastri arobindan and sri prakashan and all belongs to the orthodox hindu brahmin families and uh, ramananda sastri was the son of a high priest of sameshwaram pakshi lakshmana sastri and he when he grew up when he become adult he took the priesthood priesthood in rameshwaram and arabindan went into the business arranging transport for visiting pilgrims for holy places and sri prakashan became catering contractor in southern railways during the annual sri sitaram kalyan kalyanam ceremony our family used to arrange boats with a special platform for carrying idols of the lord from the temple to the marriage site seated in the middle of the spoon called rama tirtha which was near our house even from the ramayana and from the life of the prophet where the bedtime stories my mother and grandmother would tell the children in our family so what happened in this paragraph he tells us that there are no disparity between hindu and muslims then and in the families of kalam also when he was small uh, during sri sita ram kalyanam ceremony his family used to arrange boat which carried idol of lord rama from temple to the marriage site and this was situated on the middle of the pond ramatirtha and ramatirtha was very near his house and 
Kalam's mother and grandmother used to tell children the stories of from Ramayana and the stories of religious prophets of Muslim community. One day when I was in the fifth standard at the Rameswaram Elementary School, a new teacher came to our class. I used to wear a cape which marked me as a Muslim and I always sat in the front row next to Ramananda Sastri who wore the secretary. The new teacher could not stomach a Hindu priest son sitting with a Muslim boy. In accordance with our social ranking as the new teacher saw it, I was asked to go and sit in the back bench. I felt very sad and so did Ramanatha Sastri. He looked utterly downcast as I shifted to my seat in the last row. The image of him weeping when I shifted to the last row left a lasting impression on me. So, APC Abdul Kalam believes in religious harmony that he inherited from his family actually. But since his childhood, he faced religious disparity in schools and societies. And once us, one of those incidents happened when he was in fifth standard. When he, a new teacher come to their class who believes in religious casteism. When he saw Dr. Kalam, a Muslim boy, is sitting together with a Brahmin boy, Ramanadha, he could not tolerate this and so make him or ask him to sit in the big bands. When he was sent to the big bands, Ramananda feels very sad and his Kalam also feels sad and his face said made him left a lasting impression on the mind of Kalam. Actually, both of them are good friends, close friends. After school, when we went home and told our respective parents about the incident. Lakshmana Sastri summoned the teacher and in our presence told the teacher that he should not separate, uh, spread the poison of social inequality and communal tolerance in the minds of innocent children. He bluntly asked the teacher to either apologize or quit the school or end the school. Not only did the teacher regret his behavior, but the strong sense of conviction Lakshmana Sastri conveyed ultimately reformed this young teacher. So, when Ramanatha's father come to know about this incident, he summoned a teacher and told him not to spread such kind of thinking in such innocent children. Then the teacher learned his mistake and reform himself through in this way Lakshmana Sastri turned or sends a teacher from his earlier beliefs. On the whole, the small society of Ramaswaram, Rameshwaram was very rigid in terms of segregation of different social groups. However, my science teacher, Siva Subramania Iyer, though an orthodox Brahmin with a very conservative wife, was something of a rebel. He did his best to break social barriers so that people from varying background could mingle easily. He used to spend hours with me and would say, Kalam, I want you to develop so that you are on par with the highly educated people of the big cities. So, another incident uh, took place when 
his science teacher Shiva Subramaniam Iyer call him to his home actually APJ Abdul Kalam was greatly influenced by his science teacher he learned the lesson of breaking the social barriers from the society for in this position another incident actually took place when subramaniam ayer whose wife was very conservative but as he is a open minded man so he taught kalam to face the society with courage and confront all these problems relating or barriers relating to casteism and he want kalam to be highly educated one day he invited me to his home for a meal his wife was horrified at the idea of muslim boy being invited to dine in her ritually pure kitchen she refused to serve me in her kitchen shiva subramaniam ayer was not perturbed her not nor did he get angry with his wife but instead served me with his own hand and sat down beside me to eat his meal his wife watched us from behind the kitchen door i wondered whether she had observed any difference in the way i ate rice drank water or cleaned the floor after the meal when i was leaving his house shiva subramanya i invite me to join him for the dinner again in the next weekend or observing my hesitation he told me not to get upset saying once you decide to change the system such problems have to be confronted when i visited his house in the next week shiva subramania ayer wife took me inside her kitchen and served me food with her own hands so another incident took place when his teacher invite him for meal his wife was very orthodox hindu lady who didn't ready uh, to serve her meal to a muslim boy in the her own pure kitchen the teacher was open minded so he didn't believe in all these things and he himself served dr kalam his meal and also sit beside him and have his meal with him and at that in subramaniam i was we found that he is successful in changing his wife's mind who is very conservative and for a second time when he is visited their home she served food with her own hands then the second world war was over and india's freedom was imminent indians will build their own india declared gandhi ji the whole country was filled with a unprecedented optimism i asked my father for permission to leave rameshwaram and study at the district headquarters in ramanathpuram second world war was over dr kalam wanted to go to ramanathpuram for higher studies so he asked his father for permission to leave ramanathpuram
He told me as if thinking aloud, Abdul, I know you have to go away to grow. Does the seagull not fly across the sun? Alone and without a nest? He quoted Khalil Zibrans to my hesitant mother. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. So, uh, his father supported him, but his mother was a little bit hesitant. She did not want to separate from her actually son. So, at last, uh, at that point or that time, uh, his father quoted a very famous lines from the poem of Khalil Gibran to his hesitant mother. Uh, she should not stop her children to growing or rising in life because they have their own thoughts, they have their own life to look after. As a parents, they should not bound in any way, bound them in any way. So, this is the summary of this. Or oh, this is all about this scepter. This story actually uh, talks about Dr. Kalam's childhood and some such incidents which create lasting impression in his life. This scepter describes about his family, about his house, about his friends, his teachers and his childhood experiences which are very very crucial in shaping the person whom we found now as a great scientist statements statement Dr. And the president, 11th president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. In my next video, I will give you the question answers and the message of this chapter. If you understood the lesson, nicely then do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.